What are the differences between owning a food truck and a brick and mortar business? I think our main goal is that we'd like to see a fleet of trucks. I'd like to see, you know, parlay into uh, restaurant spaces, brick and mortars, absolutely. Uh, from here, I mean, the end goal is to, uh, you know, build this into a restaurant. Uh, we're really using the truck as a, a promotional tool to uh, get our name out there, get people excited about uh, the food. Um, we thought sandwiches were very approachable for a food truck. Um, obviously, they're not your everyday sandwiches, but just something to uh, you know get people talking and to get people excited about different flavor combinations. I mean, the thing that kills me that you don't get in a restaurant is there's so much wasted time, in my opinion, in a truck. Um, in a restaurant, every single second of your day is utilized, and it has to be here too, to a certain extent. But you can't predict traffic, especially in Los Angeles. Um, all you can do is pair stops close together. But if you have something that's great in Hollywood, and then you have to go across town by Paramount or something to something else that's guaranteed that's great, then you're spending a lot of time on the road. So there's so much time you're just sitting in traffic during the day where in a restaurant you could be prepping, you could be uh, vending, you could be selling, you know, uh, a lot of different things could be going on, but instead you're just sitting behind the wheel patiently waiting to get to the next spot. Talk about the differences between brick and mortar and food truck, please. I do have a, I had a restaurant in Hermosa Beach now, it's going on 22 years, and I used to say I would take a food truck over a restaurant any day of the week. Now, I gotta tell you, I'd take a restaurant over a food truck. And the reason why, guys, is this food truck is, like I said, it's a fad. This is a, it started off back when I did this show five years ago. I mean, there was hardly any food trucks out there. Now, this, this, this business is so saturated. I mean, you got you to gotta bring cars and park at these locations early in the mornings in order for you to bring your food trucks to a, a location down in L.A. or in Santa Monica. I basically do private lots because I don't have the hassle of going try to find a parking spot at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning to bring my food truck, number one. Number two, restaurants, I mean, I have a following for 20, 22 years. Uh, I, my customer base, it's all based out of the South Bay here, so with my name and my reputation and my great food, I'll take a restaurant over a food truck any day, even though I do have a great name with the food trucks too. I do have a good following with the food trucks. I talked to a lot of people in the past, you know, other truck owners, and their goal is to actually get a brick and mortar, you know? and you know successfully Rage Occasion got a brick and mortar right and these uh, I, I remember talking in the past with you guys you guys wanted to get a brick and mortar someday also yeah. see and yeah uh, for me that's not the case you know I, I love the business see so uh, if I'm gonna stick around I'm gonna invest a little more into it Daniel that's following up on that comment you said to uh, this isn't my I believe when I first talked to you, you said this isn't the food. A lot of people want to start a brick and mortar like they do. Uh, you don't want to start a brick and mortar. No. This is your goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. It. Uh, a lot of guys would use um, you know the food truck trucks as a stepping stone to get them started, right? And once they develop enough cash, they would open up a restaurant. Um, they'll use the food truck. If they own the truck, then they'll use it for catering events here and there every now and then. But uh, the trucks are neglected because they're not running like they used to. Okay? And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a different goal. You know? But for me, um, it's not a stepping stone. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the capstone, <laughs> see? And you know, it, it does break my heart every now and then when I do talk to other people when um, you know, uh, they, they'll tell me like, and they'll ask me, oh, so when are you going to get a, a brick and mortar? Or, uh, when? But not just that. Uh, the biggest question is, um, when are you going to have a real business? <laughs> and I'm like, what? What do you mean real? This is real for me. This is, this is what's taking care of me, my um, bad habits, obviously, you know. Um, uh, and and, and it's, it's doing well for me. It's, it's not, um, you know. This is as real as it gets. Steven. Yes, Tom. You've gone brick and mortar. Yes, sir, I have. You've become incredibly successful in just a couple of months. Yes, I have, Tom. For someone starting off in the food truck business who is listening to Dan and saying, well, maybe, you know, I don't want to get a, mortar, uh, a brick and mortar. These gentlemen do. What are the benefits? How did you make out? All right, guys, first things first. I came back, I came out here in 1988. I drove a little red Nissan, that blue smoke, okay? 
if that thing would have stopped in the middle of Texas, we wouldn't be talking right now, okay? Just to let you guys know. Right. I came out here with nothing. I learned from the best back home. I come from old school, okay? I took my mama's, mama's, mama's recipes. And I came to Hermosa Beach. I found this little spot. I, there's, a, there's a story. We can talk about this later on. But just to cut through all the... I opened up this little, small, four-table place in Hermosa, and I called it Raging Cajun. And everybody told me it wasn't going to work. I was next to a funeral home. I mean, I heard it all. I took this place, and I went from four tables to 16 to 32 in a matter of a year and a half. And everybody asked me, why don't you expand one more time? And I was like, nope, business is dead next door. All right, so I just, that's where the funeral home comes in. But anyway, I did this. I, I, the landlord kicked me out after 22 years so his son could open up a restaurant. So what I did was I, I got a food truck. After I did this, I actually went on this TV show called The Great Food Truck Race, season one. I lied to these people and said I was on the show. I mean, I, 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 mean, I lied to the people. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. I lied to the people telling them I had a food truck, and I never did. And believe it or not, they called me the next day and said I was on the show. I got that truck done in a day and a half, and I was on the road, guys, just to let y'all guys know. But with that said, I actually, after I did the show, I was on the food truck for a little while. I opened up the restaurant down in the Hamosa at a bar called Susie's. I was there for like eight months. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I took this guy's business from I'll, I'll 15, I'll give him 20000 a month. They were doing 20000 a month. When I got in there, and I actually did Invasion of Rage and Cajun, I wanted to see what it would be like. So I did it for one night just to check it out and see how, just to see if people would be interested if I opened up in that bar. I did it in April of 2013. And one night, Invasion of Rage and Cajun. Guys, I had a line of 250 people out the door. I couldn't get them in. So I was like, Raging Cajun at Susie's is going to be a good fit. So I, like I told y'all, I took their sales from 20000 to $85,000 a month, okay? These people didn't appreciate me, didn't respect me. I said, bye-bye. Found this location in Redondo. I've been open up now two months. Two months, guys. What I've done in there in two months took me to do probably at Susie's, I want to say probably six months. I've actually, since I've been open up for two months now, I've done almost a half a million dollars in sales at my restaurant, which is amazing. Very Best good. Thing is food truck service. Yep. The, tr the food that's on the food truck yep. brought it to a brick and mortar like you gentlemen are trying to do. Yep. And he's getting numbers like that. Yep. Daniel, does that make you want to open a brick and mortar? Uh, again, you know. I think you Dan needs to invest in my in my raging cage. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. I'll you be love, the yeah, we, we we all have our loves, and uh, one of my loves is uh, food trucks. There's a big difference in uh, food trucks and uh, restaurants. You know, some foods that you sell off of a food truck won't translate into a restaurant, and some foods uh, you know that are from a restaurant won't translate into a food truck. You know, raging Cajun here. He's got it good, you know. Do you disagree with that? Um, no, you know, I can I can tell you guys, uh, I just can't carry half the stuff on my food truck from the restaurant because it's just impossible. These trucks are just so big, you know what I mean? It's just, you have so much room. But if I could carry a lot of my products from the restaurant, I'm sure I'd do a, a hell of a lot more business than when I'm, even though I do a good business right now. Like I said, if I had a Cadillac, I think I'd do a, Hell of a business. I get up every morning at 6. I come and make sure that the truck is all ready to go. We go from 11.30 to about 2 o'clock for lunch. And then at dinner time, I go to Orange County with my truck. And we usually go to about 8.30, quarter to 9, and then we're finished and we take the truck back in. 